Right, stop broadcasting or start broadcasting. Oh, and I'll just check my microphone. Is the right microphone? Yes, that's the right camera. That's the right microphone. And it's safe. Right, okay. So, um, so they can see me. Hello, Internet. Um, so we're going to be doing uh, the integration project um, presentation uh, from the students and getting doing feedback and and working out where people are at and, and seeing how their planning for the integration project is going. Um, we've been talking a little bit about exams and, and um, just general course stuff rather than the integration project. So so today you, um, we've, we've been asking you guys to be um, developing your ideas, getting an idea of what you're going to do narrowing that down um, and trying to become more concrete about what the actual project is going to be. Um, some of you might have actually also started actually starting to test and implement things, um, but uh, the main point at this stage is to make sure that that you have a plan for when you've finished the exam and go into Easter, um, what you're thinking about and then coming into after Easter, rolling into actually integrating and building stuff. Um, I know we have one more exam um, after Easter, which is the serious games course, but it's pushed back a wee way. So um, you can get quite a lot done before you have to start then restudying for that course. I do not expect you to study solidly for the next month <laughs> on the serious game course. Okay, so I expect you to do the integration project. Um, okay, so uh, in terms of, of who wants to present, so uh, Martin, you were saying you had some stuff that you could, okay, if you could. Head up. Um, so we have we have a, a reasonable number of students here. Oh. And then people seasick as this bounces. And supposedly it's gonna to get to nine degrees today. Yeah. It's good. Do <laughs> so not be freezing to death. Um, Okay, so uh, sprint one, excellent. You're actually using the right terminology and everything. Yeah. It's, it's like from, from the previous semester. It's like you care. <laughs> I, and that is part of the point, right? We taught you stuff in the last semester which you hopefully can apply, um, though we're not specifically trying to teach you that stuff or grade you on that part of it. But it's good to see you using previous knowledge. So, okay, so. Sprint one, which you can barely see here, but yes, I can see sprint one. So our project is uh, regarding Twitch, Twitch streaming service. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, based on the chat and algorithms. And what we are trying to do is to create a bot that will kind of analyze the chat and will show the streamer uh, trending messages. Because usually when the streamer has a lot of views, he, the chat just goes up and he loses a lot of uh, maybe important messages, maybe not important, but... <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, that's what we are trying to do. So what we did these two weeks is kind of uh, overall things like uh, getting to know the project, getting familiar with Twitch, because me and him didn't use Twitch, it was his idea. So we were just getting familiar with all these things, with the description, what he's trying really to do. So yeah, and uh, we kind of have prepared an overall outline, like just, just uh, for example, we, we are, we did some planning things with Jira. Uh, we did some learning new stuff, like what kind of technologies we will use, what kind of platforms and everything. We kind of split the responsibilities and talked about the workflow, and we'll have a, a, a demo in, in like kind of what we have for now. So 
uh, plant items like uh, we used Jira again, so we created our project and uh, what we did is that we created three epics first and the thing is that we are we were much more much more familiar with Jira than last semester so we kind of were successful in that like it feels easy we didn't mess yeah. up everything with the user <laughs> stories task and things so we last, time, last time I had the project we managed to screw something up so we had to re-add tons of user stories back in the system again after we had added them in there ah oh, irritating yeah, yeah. So <laughs> this semester was, was was much better mm -hmm. and we cre we created three epics so it was api web application and the chat analysis analysis and we tried to to divide the tasks the user stories right or yes. Yes. yes user stories yes divided into each uh, each group and uh, we also had like some general functionality in the back Uh, yeah, um, as Arlet already mentioned, we have to learn a lot of new stuff. Uh, Twitch, uh, which is also a huge thing when you don't know it uh, yet. Uh, but uh, also Angular 2, which is, of course, new for all of us, uh, since it is pretty new. Um, TypeScript. Um, yeah, you can also use JavaScript for Angular 2, but TypeScript will be the main language, so we decided to use that one. Um, ASP.NET 5. Um, uh, I haven't worked with uh, C Sharp at all so far, uh, other than Martin has some uh, experience, but uh, .NET 5 is also pretty new, so uh, some major changes from uh, to previous versions. Uh, and the entity framework uh, to talk to the database and for the rest of the databases. Um, then we split the responsibilities. Uh, I will be responsible for the front end and Martin uh, and Ari for the back end. Um, yet it doesn't mean that um, or all of us will work on both parts, but um, I will have focus on the front end and the tool on the back end. Uh, then the workflow we have four um, categories. Uh, in the first place, all the tickets and issues will be in the to-do uh, category, and if somebody starts on it, it will have the status in progress. Um, when he thinks he's finished, it will have the status ready for review, then somebody else has to get to know the code, and um, as soon as both of them, the uh, creator and the reviewer, agree on the code, and both of them understand the code, uh, yeah, it's done. Um, uh, and meetings, we decided to uh, work in school together for the most time uh, rather than working from home. So we will need this a little. Yeah, so I'll go through the retrospective. Um, uh, we kind of agreed that the planning stage of this uh, sprint went uh, quite well since we've got a uh, quite uh, concrete idea about what we want to implement. And we also have managed to get a long list of uh, things that needs to be done and things that needs to be implemented. And the efficiency by adding that into Jira went far, far easier on this sprint uh, compared to our previous project. Where we used Jira, it was uh, quite painful in the beginning, but then we sort of got there and we managed to use things quite efficiently. And uh, what kind of did it go so well? This sprint was that there was a lot of stress and lots of other things going around pretty much everywhere. Yeah. We had exams, we had hand-ins, and that sort of made a huge distraction from us being able to focus on this project. But nevertheless, we've been able to uh, plan some things and add some items in the backlog and uh, some things like that. So you might see that I have been stressful, so uh, I can't wait until we become restful again. <laughs> So now I'm going to show you guys a small demo of the system. Oh, thank you. So what I'm doing now is that I start the uh, bot itself, and it will try to connect to Twitch, and it will start itself up. and. Uh, connect to the chat and uh, then it will start enjoying all the channels that it's been registered on moderating. So uh, we can see here it's uh, joining the two channels. Uh, if you join the channel, Shikashi Bot, Mind, and also Advanced. 
so if you want one radical, you can see these are all the channels that the body is currently seeing. And if we go on Twitch, You can see here that the bot posted this message in the chat right after I started the application. And this is kind of the to notify the user that the um, bot is currently in the channel. And if the user forgot to moderate the give bot moderation rights in the chat, I can do that right away. Since uh, the bot needs moderation rights in order to perform actions on other users inside the chat. So if I, for example, now I can perform commands towards the bot, so I can post two can, and uh, it will post a two can in the chat. And this is sort of a internal uh, Twitch joke uh, where, pe where people can spam this in the chat to sort of get attention from the streamer. Um, that's pretty much the very very basics of the Twitch bots. Uh, that's quite basic interaction between. Uh, the chat and the bot itself. So if you look here, you can see that uh, there's some things that happen here. It's so that I post two can, and then it executes the chat command handler that's registered on exclamation mark two can. And uh, that's oops, the demo that we had for today. And uh, yes. So as a as an as an external person bringing up Twitch here. Um, do I see? So if I type in something, if you type exclamation mark two can, you should also see it. Uh, but you have to be signed in in order to uh, post in the chat. Oh, right. Okay, right. And I should be able to. Let's see if it will let me. I just want to see that I can actually harass you. Um, <laughs> Continue as Simon. I'm saying okay. I'm trying to continue as Simon. Okay. Connecting. I'm I'm not a robot. I don't know if I've got a username. I wonder if I've got a username already. I may already have a username. Invalid username. Okay. I'm not a robot. Connect. Oh, I already exist as using it. Right, okay. Um, I'm not a robot. Connect. Existing user. That's me. Okay, I'm... Does anyone else have a Twitch account? I'm just having to find out what my password was. Ah, no, it's okay. Um, that's right. I, I'm assuming that it will sit there in the box in the chat and yeah, and, yeah give me and when I type stuff in, it will give me stuff. Yeah. Okay. Um, any questions for you? Nope. Okay. So in terms of of um, your planning, um, so you've got one more exam yeah, on. Pull up, uh... Yeah, pull it back. Um, you've got an exam on Wednesday. Yes. Thursday. Okay. So, and then your brains are freed up from a lot of material. Yes. And so you've only got basic, oh, here I am, trying to do something. Right, you change it to me. Okay. Uh, <laughs> back in January. Yep. Um, so uh, you've then got just the digital entrepreneurship and this course yes. um, that you're, the, the, well, and the exam for serious games, which is just one date way back in, the, in this. Um, so, in the integration and the digital entrepreneurship, are you uh, doing related to this, or are you in different of, groups? He explained to, to, to the person that yep. what we are trying to do, but he was kind of skeptical, and he said that it's too much technology oriented. And what we did is that we kind of uh, meet up and then brainstorm, and what we 
we decided is like we will create a new streaming platform, like with all with a lot more features and uh, improvements based on Twitch and kind of the problematics around Twitch when it comes to like development plugins and customization and so on and so forth. Because today, as it is now, I have to install tons of plugins to customize Twitch. Right. So, yeah. The, the funny thing about Twitch is that many people use many different Twitch accounts that's not official. And in order to see them, I have to install a plugin in my browser in order to see them. And that can be a problem because I could be on a device that doesn't support those plugins, or I could be on a phone or a console, and then I wouldn't see those when it comes. And, and, uh, and, 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 and yes, you do have, have issues like, so when I was trying to explain uh, repeatability, the, the concept of repeatability, I was talking to you guys, uh, to Jason over Skype, um, I used f of x. Do you know what? what? F of x oh, yeah. yeah yeah and you know what that generates if dancing woman oh yeah 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 because <laughs> open yeah. bracket x yeah. close bracket is a but dancing can, woman in sky so i had so i was saying to jason f of dancing woman <laughs> and kind of, what no i need x in parentheses yeah <laughs> so trying to write formulas on skype is not a great deal yeah. not a good good way to it. but yeah um, so now you, you get a bunch of those sort of problems. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So you're, so you know, that, that, that would be interesting. So I know Twitch also has, um, uh, programming, um, channels. Has yeah. Actually, gaming like channels. You see here, uh, you've been, um, listed yourself in the parts of this, on on creative, which is sort of their, uh, programming channel. Yep. Yep. So yeah. So now it, 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 do, you, do you have any followers who actually follow you on the creative channel? Uh, I have 13 followers. <laughs> nice. 13 people know you exist. That's yeah. very good. Yeah. Um, yes, uh, we, 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 we've been considering whether, whether Marek and I should also start um, Twitch streaming anything we do in yeah. terms of whenever we're jumping into two code. The thing is, uh, when you, if you want to stream on Twitch, especially programming, it's kind of difficult because what you need to do when you stream is that you should also narrate instead of just having a uh, Playing screen that's streamed onto Twitch because most people are not interested in that. They want some sort of interaction so they can, for example, have some sort of um, conversation between the chat and the streamer going on. And that's when things start to interest them. So, uh, do you narrate order in, uh, in the chat or do you narrate actually audio, with audio? I assume you're narrating. Yeah, audio yes. would be far better than just typing because that's quite boring in a sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, um, I'm quite happy to narrate while I work. Yeah. So, so yeah, um, it's yes. When you've got children, sometimes that's what you have to do: is you go into narrate mode, when, like you know, you describe everything you're doing so that they can follow along. So yeah, yeah. But okay, cool. Thank you very much. Yep. So no, I, I think you've got good backlog. Yeah, you've got a good good lot of tasks. You'll be able to focus from Thursday. Um, you going away for Easter? Oh. Uh, Parts, parts yeah, of Easter, yeah. right? So, add it. You can you can get some stuff done and get some catch up done. But um, yeah, I'm given that your your integration project is also your entrepreneurship project has a relationship. That means that you guys can go start bearing yourself into this project a bit more and get that feeling of like productive progress that you get when you don't have constant papers distracting you and other deadlines and all those other things. So, cool. Okay. Good. All right. Anyone else? Can use the product, yeah. Does anyone else want to use particular? Yep, that'd be great. Okay. Right. So, um, young Gregor, would you be able to to go next then? Yes. If <laughs> you can go next, then. Um, I... Yeah, it's getting used to it. Right. I believe I have a workaround for you. Um, one of the cables I normally have in my bag, if I can find it, is the cable that does that. Do you have mini display? Yes.
It's just the shield. <laughs> it's not electrified. It won't. It won't kill you. Just telling me the um, our Skype person that, that we're on. I mean, yes. Uh, actually, no, it's not a dancing woman. Sorry, I got that wrong. Yeah, but it's something that moves. It is, no, no, it is. It is actually a stationary woman, <laughs> tap, maybe tapping her foot, but it's the the standing, you know, um, hands on hips, sort of, you know, grumpy looking kind of. Apparently, that's what. Function of so I have if grumpy looking woman. <laughs> so, okay, right. So, tell us how you guys go. Right, uh, just to summarize, just let me change. I think this might be a bit sick. Just to summarize, what we originally thought about doing was the quiz. Quiz where we sort of could. Uh, the original plan was only to sort of take this uh, flash application as a port it to um, Angular and HTML5. And well, that seems like a reasonable amount of work. I personally think we go to run out of things to do. That's the only thing we're doing. And the scope might be a little too, too uh, ambitious. So, sort of been thinking about sort of extending it further, like things like yeah, adding in a lot more functionality, a lot of things that we don't do, Simon. Like, for example, one thing could be to change the scoring system, to add in sort of hints when you're unsure about the questions, and also try to, well, moving on to sort of the back end part, you can also like add in stuff like um, automatically generated um, alternatives. Or what's the name? Of, what do you call the alternatives? Well, what's that? Distractors. Distractors. Yeah. And stuff like that. But uh, personally, like this website was made um, sort of starting in 2012, and a lot of the expression of five technologies were not really present at that time. Sort of the reason behind the interest in Flash. So I also wanted to add in a lot of really cutting edge technology like service workers, uh, web workers, um, pulling in the sense of like, if someone posts a news article to the website, it shows up on the site, which is actually something I implemented already. But I can show you guys. But first off, do you guys know what a service worker is? That is as cutting edge as possible. The guy that was following, following was 17 hours old. Uh, the update required to the browser in order to implement it came out the day before. It's like that close. And it's really fun to work with. But in general, service workers is kind of can be a bit hard to understand. But in general, you can say it's like you're registering a sort of um, web worker. That's persistent over the entire domain or the subdomain you choose it for, and it can do operations like caching, intercepting all communication, and altering to like whatever you want to. I'm going to show you an example of that. And the last one they're working on, which is horrible to implement, I just gave up. It's like they have a subscription to laying a notification API with like then pull from centralized server on using the pull API and then show notifications, for example, based on that. But it's horribly implemented currently. Like if you're using Chrome, they are requiring you to use their API service for the backend. Unless you do that, it's not possible currently. 
like uh, for example, I wanted to add in uh, simple uh, pop-ups showing up, browser-based pop-ups showing up like notifications, if you know what I mean. Like a few pages, including Facebook has started using this, which shows up in the bottom right corner. Like your friend has posted something, click here to read more, even if you're not on the website. And adding in that is kind of an interesting thing. But then again, Chrome hits, up, hits me, sort of. I didn't really believe it, but implementing stuff like this is easier in Firefox than Chrome because they are sort of not following the specification due to how they're making their mobile application. The thing is that the normal approach is that you make a service worker, if you guys know what that is, that is in general threading in web development. Like you create a separate. Yeah, that worker. Separate JavaScript thread that just runs in the background. And it communicates with the main API on that thing. And it can do stuff like Ajax communicating and stuff like that. So it's really, really interesting to use. And then sort of you can make that and add in like it's using Ajax to ask the server and do some polling, get some like the latest news, and then show it as a notification. Uh, the problem is that like Chrome uh, web browser on mobile and Android, they have discontinued use of that API even though it's supposed to have been added for one specific reason, uh, and that is that on Chrome, they're like, you're having a lot of tabs open, but it's on the phone, so you have limited resources. So they kill off each single tab you don't have open, and they sort of reload it when you open it again. So then using service workers is, not really feasible on mobile because like they just kill gets killed all the time and restart it later so you can't do some pulling. So you're supposed to use service workers but you're not currently implemented. But I can show you some practical examples of this. Right. Uh, the first thing is that with service worker you can intercept um, all the requests. Like every time your browser is supposed to request a resource like that image it sort of goes through the service broker and, and intercept it and change it. So I imagine like on this site, I can just show you the live example. Like, <laughs> imagine you want to change languages. Then you have a language bar with every language supported on the site. Cool. What happens if you intercept that call and change it to something more interesting? Like, for example, this. You can intercept each one of the calls based on some fancy um, interpretation and change it to whatever resource you want to. And if you guys are interested, I'll probably show you like changing every single image to the same image is also possible using this. The main use of it is like caching, trying to have offline API, offline um, support website. But that's kind of sketchy right now. It's hard to um, Simon, do you want to open this website so I can show you in person? Okay, so we're, we're what's the, so I can't quite ah, see that. Right, uh, hemstudios.nlc. I can probably type it for you if you want to. Uh, hemstudios.nlc. Oh, no, no. Yeah, but I know, but that's redirecting you to the wrong site. That's it. Yeah, that's him private. Dino. Yeah. So you have to slash private. You can see it up there now. But if someone else wants to open it, I can also show you how the news API yeah. sort of pulling works. Thinking about it, it's thinking about it, it's sharing video. Who are you using Chrome? Yes. Uh, there's a serious failing problem right now where service yes. work is just crashed in that browser. So there's a chance that it's going to kill you. Oh, it, it just did not sound. Really? Might have typed it wrong. Did I get that wrong? Oh, not bird, bird ID. Oh, bird. Sorry. 
Bird ID. <laughs> Sorry, I thought he was. I thought you were talking about you know birds. <laughs> yeah, it got there. It didn't crash everything yet. Uh, by the way, if there's someone who is wanting to implement service for this, I recommend highly recommend using Firefox because they have a lot of development tools available. Like you can automatically update them. And So I should click on birds. No, just stay on the front page. Because like um, when you have the front page or you, like the bird sub page open, mm -hmm. uh, a service worker starts in the background automatically pulling from the centralized server and asking for like if there's any news available. You can see it with the uh, command console. I might have removed some of it last night. Like, uh, but uh, also like, but like, if I add in a picture, download font, download not allowed, Roboto, bad URL across site access not allowed, source, unreachable code after return statement. So it's got three unreachable code after your 10 uh, seconds. That's developing. And oh, it's, download that's problem font. downloading fonts. Yep. Is that something I included? Probably. It's nothing with um, no. what I'm talking about currently. OK. Now, post this uh, article, it's going to update in two seconds at the most. If you're ready. Okay, yeah, I think. So, where should it, should it top up? Uh, just close the um, command uh, developer tools. Right. You guys see it? Yeah. Everybody is the same. <laughs> so we can uh, change browser um, if you want to see it again because it's using local storage to prevent it from pulling the same article. Both. Yeah, it should work uh, because it's not using service blockers. So where should it be? Uh, bottom right, but you might not have allowed for notifications. So if you click at uh, top left at um, yeah. us. It should be news. Yeah, there you go. Right. If you you can also click it to open the article we... because it has an on click event, so you can redirect it to the problem. When I if, when I pressed F five, it reloaded, and I would like to allow receive notifications. Okay. Yeah, unless you allow notifications, the web worker yeah. is not started. Uh, yeah. Good. Uh, sorry, you just said uh, you're not using service. I'm using a service worker, uh, but it's not doing anything except changing the tags to the topics. I tried using it for um, doing the actual polling, but like if you're using web workers, which is like defined a long time ago and it's implemented in all the browsers, then you can use XML. Um, oh, what's the name? The Ajax request. Uh, do you remember the call? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, that's all. But you got uh, as a conversion now too. You can use that probably. No problem. And that's not using pulling. Like one problem is that you don't have access to the window object and a lot of other interesting objects. So you can't actually use Angular or jQuery or anything like that in web workers due to that problem. So we have to manually add in, in the request mapping, but it's definitely not really that hard. But well, not at least anymore. Uh, but the problem is, if you're using service worker, you can't even do that. You can't uh, use the XML request at all. You have no way of manually communicating with the server unless you're using the pulling API, subscription-based pulling API, which makes service workers rather useful at the moment. 
But then again, what I'm using is like tools that came out four days ago. They might change and we might get a lot of other functionality. Okay, so in terms of, so, so you've got your planning. So you guys have, have been, the yeah, you have, you've been, been reading the stuff and, and been looking at it and, and getting up to speed. Well, the Angular 2. With Angular 2. I think most of the project will be Angular, just translating and editing. Yeah, uh, that's the uh, larger task. Uh, we're sort of aiming for it to do that first. Like, don't start on everything at the same time. For once, I really want to finish a project, <laughs> not just get to the point where we're actually getting work done, and suddenly we're done. Yeah, it's the end that of the That was the previous project. It feels that yeah. So this is the so the integration project is is uh, you've got a bit more hopefully more time to get that done now from now until the semester you can start getting more of feeling of for getting stuff done. Right? So um, now so you're doing Angular two uh, in terms of the mobile. It's um, Angular is is nicely set up for for viewing on mobile. Are there anything specific that you're doing? Supporting mobile, or are you more going to go down to games and support games? What's the, um, the integration side of it, or are you going to just do both? It should support mobile. That's one of the major goals. But uh, I mean, is there anything specific in terms of touch to drag, like drag and drop, or like the, the finger dragging, or sensors, or anything that you were going to do right. to integrate? No. Because it should work at the same on browsers as on desktop. As on so it's more so so you're gonna include integrate some of the, the games in terms of scoring and, and yeah. 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 yeah yeah and and um, those sort of things as part of that integration of the different areas um, and therefore be able to kind of refer back to some of the papers that you've been reading in the the um, in the game in the games course or potentially the uh, mobile course. Okay, so yeah, no, that, that, and and you've got a. Are you going to use Jira and have backlogs and those yeah, things? Yeah. Yeah, so you've, yeah, right. So you've, you're kind of at, at that stage, but you've been focused on the exams yeah, for yeah. Thursday, and then what's your Easter plan looking like? Yeah, I'm not. I'm away from Easter. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So so you guys are going to take the break of Easter and then come back and kind of go, boom, straight into this. I'm going to do a lot of research, like I've been doing currently. Service projects and get an overview of what's possible and what's sort of interesting to do. Yep. But actual work is probably going to start off. Yeah, no, that sounds that sounds good. Okay, so you guys have been making progress. Well done, thank you. Okay, any of anything from you guys? No, no, no other questions? Okay, yeah, are you need something that's just been released. Uh, even Angular 2 is still, yeah, uh, been playing around new. with it. Um, it's actually when I got to it and started working on it, it's easier. It's more structured, um, more straightforward than the one. Yes. But then again, it's not uh, officially released yet. Or it's documented, or yes. Or there's no, no community that will help you. Like, no. no. Examples, so, yeah. Uh, we'll but the, the official website is being updated rather fast at the moment. Like, it does mean, however, that if you, if you are going on to Stack Overflow or you're posting questions or you solve something, um, you sharing that becomes more valuable, yeah. right? So it gives you the opportunity to um, build some reputation in the sites like Stack Overflow for the, the fact that you've actually solved some people's problems that are kind of new and no one else has solved yet, right? So so you can so I I I, I would see that as as a useful way of contributing back to the community. It also does look very good when later you apply for jobs or when people look up what you've done um you can say well you know we started using angular 2 really early and so i've been you know that's my reputation on stack overflow and i've answered these questions and those are so it, it is there is some potentially useful um reputation that you can get by doing new things um because other people are are interested as well in learning this material uh it's a little bit harder to to go and look, if you're using Angular 1, most of the questions and most of the way things are done, most of the stuff has always been answered. It's just, yeah, so you just become more like a user, whereas you guys are now more cutting edge and more development kind of focused rather than user focused. So, okay, okay, very good. 
Okay, thank you. Right. And next group, who wants to now? Does anyone have anything more to present or do we have... Uh, right, well, what I suggest is we take a 10 minute break, walk around, come back and finish off with the talking group. So a couple of talking groups, yeah? Okay, so go, we'll walk around, we'll stand up and, and take a walk. Um, so you've been here about an hour, so. I can't check my mail and all the screaming that happens. I don't check my mail every second of the day. We're not using the projector, maybe we can have that lens. Ah, yep. Well, it's something. This doesn't look that <laughs> <laughs> This is not the no way you signed up for. <laughs> it feels good to have some sun. It does. You have vitamin D levels. Have you been taking vitamin D supplements? Okay. You don't get to, you know, it's it, vitamin D doesn't stay around that long, right? You actually, you know, you should be drinking the cod liver oil and and taking the or or, or eating like taking sanasol, which is what we give our kids, or you know, the vitamin lion lollies or something, right? Because um, at least go and buy some vitamin D pills and just take some of those, um, because yeah. Vitamin D is really critical for mood, and you get really depressed if you you drop too much vitamin D. So, yeah. They, they showed us the, the oil at the beginning. It's, right. It was not good at all. Because it was not happy when they talked. It was a joke with the media, like, the New Zealand people, like, like when they talk, like, even maybe they talk something crazy. Or they sound like something good, right? Yeah, no, that could be true. Uh, I could, I could see that. Um, you know, Rachel sometimes said, you know, if we weren't laughing, we'd be crying. Um, so, yeah, no, it, it's yeah. Um, we do, we do have uh, well because we have a big ozone hole, we get a lot of, of UV, which generates a lot of vitamin D. So, um, yeah, maybe. Um, we also treat our politicians very differently to American politicians. Um, so, because um, yes, John Oliver does the, the stuff on New Zealand, and um, he finds New Zealand very funny because we are so quaint and so weird um, in a lot of what we do. So, yes, but no, it's a, it's a, it's a general, yeah, I'd have to say that it's generally reasonably positive. Um, the Dunedin, where I um, spent most of my time when I was in New Zealand, does get very grey and depressing. You know, when you have um, when you have rain day after day after day, and it's just grey skies and, and kind of drizzle, and it's kind of ten degrees, of, sort of eight to ten degrees with drizzle and wind, and yeah, it's just really unpleasant. Um, and so they have the um, so where when I where I used to live on the west coast in New Zealand. Um, the town we had we had no rain for two weeks, and we went on to water restrictions because the water reserves were three weeks. So rain for three weeks, we'd have no water left in the town. That's how big the lake was that they had for water reserves, because you know it always rains. <laughs> it would never not rain for three weeks. That would be unthinkable. <laughs> you know? And so in the, in the 40 years previously, it hadn't not rained for three weeks. So um, very wet part of the country. Um, though the further south it got, gets more wet. So down in, in Fiordland, they, you know, they say Bergen is wet here, right? So over the West Coast, they're talking that it gets, I think it gets like three and a half, four meters of rain a year. I think it's the Bergen, the Bergen's amount of rain. Someone can find the web and look that up. Um, so, the, in, in Fiordland in New Zealand, the southern part in the west coast, 
um, one of the rain stations um, averages 14 meters of rain a year. Um, so, yeah, about three times as much rain as Bergen gets. And Bergen's supposed to be very wet. <laughs> so, so, yeah. All right, 2.2. So 14 is even more than the 2.2 <laughs> meters that Bergen gets a year. Um, and and I think I think one of the stations um, got a record of of 18 and a half meters or something in a year of rain, which that's a lot of rain. Um, um, it's it's very interesting. You get very heavy rain and very wet. It, you get yeah, it just gets. Gets, um, so yeah, no, but it's a, so you know in in Dunedin you don't get that much rain. You just get lots and lots of days with rain. Um, also a lot of wind because we live right, right in the middle of the ocean basically. Um, I think uh, Taro Heads um, by Dunedin uh, averages I think like two or three calm days a year. So it just every day there's wind. There's just you don't you don't have a day without wind. That's not that's not that's possible. Not <laughs> so so we always have wind. Um, it's just yeah, it just you know, this the southern ocean and the and the the heat from the land and the cold from the water. Um, and you know, we had a couple of years ago, um, actually when we were back in New Zealand, I suppose now five years ago, um, they actually had an iceberg had floated past and they're taking helicopter trips out from Dunedin out to land on the iceberg so people would walk around on the iceberg that was floating past because you know we're in the southern ocean occasionally you get icebergs um, <laughs> so yeah um does mean the water's always always cold in the deep the, the, the water never warms up because it's yeah, just too much ocean and too cold from, from the southern ocean right okay so who wants to who's going to talk get, give their oral presentation of where they're at so i can give them feedback your teammate is not here yet okay um i can keep i can i can keep chatting about about um do you have a progress report of how far you think you are <laughs> <laughs> You've been you've been head down, um, focused on the exam. Yeah, we were. Uh, we That's unfair. It's still we're still in that planning phase, though. Um, given you've put your priority on the exams and, and where the other groups are, it might be useful, say, during Easter to do some time on actually putting in yeah. um, a, a planning and looking at what your backlog might be and, and starting to actually get some of those issues put in so that when you come back, when people get back from Easter, there's something to get into, right? So yeah. you've got, and, and you can start thinking about, because in planning stages, often it is useful just to put the stuff in your head and kind of let it just sit there for a while while you think about what might be interesting and you kind of build, try and build connections um, and then write them down. Um, so, so yeah, um, do do try and have have some more done in your planning stage by the end of end of Easter. Um, so I think is there is a meeting for this course. After the 11th, for 11th April. Yeah, 11th of April. So, so it's two weeks after Easter. Yeah. So yeah. we have. You've got time to have time. got something done, right? So we'd like to see you actually having something implemented. So if you could do some planning over Easter and then get something done for that next, yeah. next reporting period. Okay, so you guys want to tell us? You can go and stand up. Yep. Thank you. Look like you're actually presenting. Yeah. 
we don't bring any no that's that's fine you didn't it wasn't it wasn't a call three it just is it is, is an aid yeah so what are we actually going to do we are discussing doing in a mobile application that allows chatting or messaging and what we're trying to do is provide offline functionality with like establishing a mesh with devices so we're using wi-fi uh and bluetooth to establish the connection um, from peers but not just peer to peer that is so we're trying to get multiple peers yeah right. there is actually a framework available for uh, uh, ios devices currently not for mm -hmm. android but so we're going to make use of that framework to establish mm -hmm. the multi-peer connectivity between the devices right this is also what we discussed with um, others because we did a lot of evaluation of what to use how to use and we came to the conclusion that also in accordance with the in innovation and entrepreneurship course, it would make sense for us to like, say, develop an application that you could present or sell or use, because it might, it might also just be worth it to create a framework yourself, because as, as there is currently no framework that allows communication between say iOS and Windows Phone or Android. So there is, Apple provides an iOS uh, framework that allows um, multi-peer connectivity from iOS device to iOS device, but you would left leave out uh, Android yeah, other platforms. other platforms. So this is what we like discussed. So you could go like the high level approach, use the multi-peer connectivity framework that Apple provides. You could go like a, a mid-tier or lower tier level that would make you create your own framework that might be hardware in your program like C++ or might, it might also be cool because you, at the end of the semester, you might be able to say, hey, I can send um, uh, adapting from Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, we can send messages from iOS to Android, mm -hmm. but this is not something I guess you could present like in the other course because I can say, oh, like a ping or hello world to the other. It might be a lot of work and it might just be very cool to have, but it's not something that you can publish or sell or well, it is it, okay. So, so um, my my first thought on that is um, around disaster recovery. Yes. Um, so when um, when you have natural disasters um, and New Zealand gets earthquakes relatively regularly, so we're comfortable knowing that, that you know occasionally infrastructure is destroyed, um, and having a, uh, a a mobile mesh network available where people who have power on their phone can communicate with each other and get a message to propagate out um, and certainly in most of the world there aren't enough um, iOS devices for that network to be sensitive right? Isn't that, like I um, think we read that um, in Australia and also New Zealand they had this project called Project Servo I think it was and they are trying to create a mesh network but this, they're not only using the, the user's devices but they're also using like repeaters or like say stations mm -hmm. and they're like covering some greater areas to provide just that for their yeah um, yep. and they're also looking at using um hot air balloons as part of the network as well yes so you you launch your receiver into the air over the problem with it, the, over the, the area where there's been a disaster so you can get that kind of network up and running properly so yeah so no, the, the, we, we worry about these sort of things um so we have a lot of natural disasters, but yeah. So I, I mean, and the thing is that 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 is a B to B opportunity, right? That is a mm -hmm. kind of well, B B to G B governments, right? So you're you are looking at NGOs and government organisations that manage disaster rec recovery and saying like we've got a product which is an accurate program, but it's uh, the infrastructure. So actually, the, uh, we have looked up, and there are some applications. Uh, there's this fire chat uh, developed from Open Garden. Garden. So the main purpose of that application was like these cases when there are uh, disasters, when there are protests and the network coverage is down and the people use this application to spread out messages. And everything. But uh, we are more focused on um, like a lot of context, for example, uh, solving some problems while you're traveling on the bus going to a foreign place. and start to communicate with uh, other peers that are share the same context then we have we have thought of many use cases of our application and we it besides besides using the offline uh, functionality we also want to integrate um, um, 
online functionality as well when there is uh, internet connection. So in order to people to connect, with, for example, share Facebook, uh, Facebook accounts or LinkedIn or I don't know. Yeah. yeah, so like the general use case for us is always like you have a like a shared context. So I am within NDNU right now. I am in my student's home and I can communicate with people nearby and like say, oh shit, I need an asthma spray or I need a can opener or can you help me? Or I'm in the same bus, I am in the same train. Mm -hmm. This is like the, the train and the bus station also comes in with it. We're uh, incorporating um, eye beacons so that we have like an area. We set up an eye beacon up there so we can say this is an area so we can create a fixed chat room for people that are like have access to this eye beacon. Mm -hmm. And then just so speaking, I already said, we not only want to provide offline functionality, so maybe you meet someone in, in a train or in a bus and it's like, oh, hey, cool, you're also traveling to Norway, I'm new here, uh, same interest, maybe go hiking later in two weeks when we're around Bergen, I don't know. Uh, and then so you could like exchange contact information and also provide chat functionality that goes uh, beyond this shared context because, and then I would of course need internet access for that. Mm -hmm. But so, yep, and I mean, from a, from a, a marketing business point of view, I could you, you, there is this this movement towards things like local food and 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 local purchasing of things, right? And yeah. so there are um, some tourists want to um, listen to local music, mm -hmm. right? So you want to you want to find out what people in the where you're traveling to um, are are interested in. Um, Wednesday. I'm at the Snowball Conference in Lillehammer, which is a tourism conference where people are in its media and digital and digital tourism, um, some digital components of tourism. Um, so to some extent, this this highly localized chat or chat with people who are in the same context. So people going on a tour would be in the same context. And they may not, and they also may be out of normal Wi-Fi slash mobile data coverage because they're on tour. Mm. Um, so having a chat functionality for people on the tour, um, particularly when they go out into the town, mm. which is not, yeah, no. Basically, and some most of the people don't have Netflix coverage. Most people, are. if they are, if, obviously, if they don't, if they are using the data. Uh, yeah. They also don't want to use the data because it's expensive, right? <laughs> so if you're roaming, it's going to be expensive, and you might have a limit, and and you might not want to turn on your your data roaming, and you won't know the Wi-Fi hotspots, and and so you you're at, at but you might want all the people kind of in the region yeah. to get to, to have the notification, right? So if someone just pops into a shop, you don't want to kind of wave at everybody and have them all leave and have that person leave behind, yeah. right? So while you're within the network, that should Thing out saying, oh, we're leaving now for this, the main square, right? Yeah. So that kind of context where you have a bunch of mobiles and there's a tourism context would also work quite well as a use case. Yeah, I mean, there are, a lot, there are a lot of use cases that would be perfectly fit for this, for, for, for our application. But mm -hmm. the what we think it's like different from the other application is this, uh, uh, like trying to use the iBating technology to push notifications like, Okay, we are in a context where it would be it would be okay to use the uh, to use this application. So we just fire we just fire a push notification to all the users who have the who have uh, installed our application to start actually using using the context. Hmm. So in this case, you know, on a touring or in a bus or in a train station or in an airport, in a concert, wedding, it's a lot of use cases. The eye beacon. Um... Can, and how much power does it use? It's, it's like relatively low power. Distance. Yeah, the yeah, distance and, and, and in the theory, power is, I think the LE is up to one hundred meters. And just in theory, in practice, right. yeah. like in real life, I guess. Probably 20, 30, 20, 30. Yeah. yeah. And uh, as for the battery, I think uh, with normal batteries, you go up to one year. Okay. So, so the tour guide could carry an eye beacon with them, or you can and use cover the, the area yeah. of. The, yeah. the thing so notify everybody who was in the or, shops and like stuff. for for that so, very example you just did i don't think you would have you would really need the eye beacon because you phones. can assume that the people are within close range and like it goes via hops since we're creating a mesh so i yep. i'm in distance to you but maybe not in distance to him so i can connect 
oh, via okay. the hops, yeah, via the and hops. propagate. Or, or you can them. also use your device as yeah. a beacon. Yeah. As, a, yeah. as a beacon, yeah. So you wouldn't have to have it separately. But you could have, for example, on the bus, as you said, on the bus itself. Yeah. Like, like this is like a very convenient use case yeah. for me. Is like have the eye beacon in like a train, and the train stops or they're not going anywhere. So I'm searching for someone to share a cab ride. I, yeah. Like in, in a real life scenario, I wouldn't. Oh, are you also going to Lillehammer? Okay, no. Are you going to Lillehammer? Oh, yes, you are. Do you want a cab? No, we don't. Like, and I can just like post because I can post in the same context. It only reaches the people that might be interested. Mm -hmm. And I can say, oh, I'm. I need a cab to Lillehammer. Is anyone interested? Yeah. And I might just get in touch with the people that I might not know might be relevant for me right now. This is like really convenient. rather than tweeting. Yes, which of course, you get your, your friends in the States. Yes, who now know you need a taxi. Oh, yes. <laughs> you poor bastard. <laughs> so we yeah. thought of like yeah. creating ch chat rooms or, or mm. channels. So you just don't post something and people all, all expect all people to yeah. respond there. So okay, you post something sharing a cab drive or casual chatting or mm. this or that and people join the chat room and start start communicating using the the, the mesh network okay yep okay so there's quite a lot to do there um and I mean, it's it's it is a, an interesting integration of mobile and android so yep that sounds good and you're planning to kind of get like do lots of stuff with your planning in jira and stuff after easter is that the yeah like we do have um, uh, like a proof of concept of the frameworks that is, mm -hmm. so we can send messages from device to device using either Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. So we mm -hmm. do know it works, and now we can up with like we can come up with how it should look like, what features should we implement. Um, so you have to protocol rather than exactly, physical. Exactly. Uh, is this at all possible? Yeah, yeah. Um, it is decided to go more on that higher level than just trying to get communication between. Mm -hmm. IOS and Android there and Windows. Right, so you're, trying to, you're, you're starting to move out yeah. rather than out. Yes. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Yep. Okay, so last group. Or you guys have done your, are you the last guys? Yeah. Yes, that's, yes. <laughs> Excellent. Um, I do want me to talk about you guys at the tourism conference. If you do have people who are interested in it, uh, I, I, the, I can, I can bring it up as a, if there is anybody who's talking about how they communicate in groups because uh, yeah. some of just the stuff, seated in. yeah, and just seated in that you guys are doing. I mean, if you're wanting some context in an actual business tourism case, yeah, um, because it that it fits some of the context that you're talking about is and and the people who uh, it's the emergency services for example are doing preparatory things for things when they go wrong so they don't really have like their money and their budgets and their time frames are all a bit weird right because they're governments whereas the tourism people are usually much more kind of right we want to do this now and they they have like a budget with people paying for the for services and if they can offer a better service then they get more customers and so they're kind of incentivized to improve more so so that's a potential market, um, and it, it allows you to, to 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 potentially have have some use cases where you can get people to test systems and stuff. But, okay, right. Okay, so thank you, everybody. Um, I will turn this around and do my hello internet again. Um, yes. So um, thank you for presenting. That's very good. Um, I've got the the externals. Um, are uh they've um sent um a, a written document of their progress um they're looking at doing supply a supply chain game and a simulation on a supply chain game so they've been planning that and, and working towards that so um i don't think i need to present their whole thing but um there is an external team also working in a in a, a game and web area um uh, so we're going to be working with them, seeing how we can make the supply game chain for education on supply chains um, uh, a useful and interesting web-based game. So, okay, well, I'll let you guys go back to, and I assume studying for Thursday. Would this be something you're likely to go and do now? Yes. Maybe have some food, yes. and then collectively study. Well, good luck for Thursday, and we'll try and get you all of your grades back. Um, certainly by the end of the week, they will be done. Um, I'm. 
I'm unwilling to share the spreadsheet that I have that has your grades on it until Marius has says yes, that's the spreadsheet you should, you should share. That's why I'm not kind of just going, oh, here is all your grades. Um, but yeah, they, 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 we have all of the prototype, all the, the draft grades there, and we're just ensuring that they reflect your abilities um, in relation to the um, essays and reviews. Okay. Cool. Okay. Uh, good study time. Bye-bye, internet people. Um, there was no viewers anyway, but, you know. <laughs>